There we go. Good morning, everybody. We apologize. Um, we had two links for some reason, and um, so we're just keeping you on your we're keeping you on your toes. But it's a pleasure to have everybody with us this morning. Welcome to the BCN. Um, it's wonderful to see our keynote speaker, Allison. So let me tell you, Allison is the head of diversity and social responsibility for Roark Capital Group. Uh, Roark is an Atlanta-based private equity firm with 20 billion in assets under management. Uh, Roark focuses on investments in consumer and business service companies with a specialization in franchised and multi-location models, both in the restaurant, specialty retail, consumer, business services, health and wellness, and beauty sectors. Allison, thank you for being with us today. Allison's gonna to focus on making diversity your competitive advantage and a blueprint to launch your program. On behalf of uh, the BCN founder and president, Jeff Chernoff and his wife, Anne, uh, Anne Ross, who's our executive administrator, Buddy Walford and Fred Broder, sales and marketing, we look forward to an excellent program today. We will hear from this morning, uh, returning member spotlights from Kingston Commercial Real Estate, Peter Weinbaum, Ameriprise Financial Services, Sonovis, William Weidman, and the Insurance Nana, our new member. Uh, Kingston's been with us two years, Peter three years, and Sonovis going into three years. We'd also like to welcome our guests, Concrete Solutions of Atlanta, Paul Reed, Innovative Direct, David, Scali Chiropractic, Ed and Terry, and then Rich Hark Global Inc., Rich and Jennifer, and Verified Home Systems, uh, Justin. Thank you all for being here with us. Okay, now we're gonna move this forward. Let's see, I'm having a little hiccup now on the PowerPoint. Let's see. Not sure why, guys, but um, let's go ahead and talk about rules of engagement. Un keep your mic unmuted or muted until we have a live chat opportunity. That's going to be with our speakers, with our speaker, Allison, with our returning spotlights and our new member spotlight. Uh, any success stories and thank you moments? Deborah, uh, try yeah. on your keyboard using the arrow buttons and see if that advances. Yeah, I'm doing that. And for some reason, it's still not. Um, and I'm also hitting, oh, there we go. Finally, the enter. Okay, finally, enter got stuck. So, um, okay, I think we're good now. All right. Um, so our co-hosts, as you can see, are Jeff Chernoff, Trisha Malloy, Amy Henkel, Roderick Ricks, and Mike Feely. Um, as I mentioned, to uh, make sure that you keep your mics muted until we have, again, the spotlights, the speaker, speaker questions, thank you moments, and also when we go into the events, offers, and any news that you all have, which you have a lot. Uh, our mission, as everyone knows, is to create a sense of community through building holistic relationships, resulting in ROI and sustaining strategic partnerships. And uh, more than ever, um, having these Zoom uh, meetings are important to bring us all together. So our focus again is strategic business development, building partnerships and alliances, professional development, our speakers and community engagement. Our toolkit is what you use day in and day out and we hope you utilize that. And that's our um, Zoom roundtable forums. And soon we will go back to in-person. Our ambassador advocate monthly one, uh, one hour is now to 30 minutes. Um, our website, member profiles and offers, our news and events, and our resource sharing. Our BCR uh, ambassador program, um, between the 30-minute pipeline meetings that you have with me, and then the 15 minutes in between, this gives, you, this gives you a chance to learn more about each other, and then to have your own one-on-ones without me, and just to keep us all up to date on your success. Uh, and the focus, as you all know, is the value that you bring and who's the best client and referral partner. And all of this leads to friendships that lead to business and again, uh, strategic partnerships. I'd like to thank our volunteer committee who 
again, was terrific this morning uh, and helping me figure out that there was two links. So thank you, Amy. Thank you, uh, Tricia and Roderick and Mike um, for your help. Um, our slate of speakers, we've got a terrific slate. So just uh, don't want to read this to you, but I, I want you to make sure you see the diversity in topic, uh, diversity in speaker, and um, with the idea of helping you build your business and to get, get some ideas that help you run your business better. So I will say Kyle Wade with the Atlantic Community Food Bank CEO is in March. Katie Kirkpatrick, the CEO of uh, the Metro Atlanta Chamber is in April. Gail Evans, former EVP of CNN, man, played like a man, win like a woman, May 13th. Bill Bowling, the founder of the community, Atlanta Community Food Bank, uh, is uh, our speaker June 10th and his role, new role. July 8th, we have Chris Clark, the president of the Georgia Chamber and uh, Jeff Ansel, media relations. And September 9th, we've got a fireside chat with the hoteliers and restaurateurs. And then in October, we've got the Atlanta Hawks uh, fireside chat. Uh, we're working on Steve Coonan, the CEO, Andrew Saltzman coming back, Lloyd Pierce, the coach, and a couple of the players. Member news offers and events. Um, I'd love to open it up now for a live chat. And if you take about 30 seconds, uh, all of you that have posted uh, news, offers and events, uh, we can't do all of you, but I'd love for you to, to uh, let Roderick know if you'd like to share about a book launch, Natasha, uh, uh, David Taylor Klaus, some updates from you, Debbie Rosen with uh, Nakado and many others. We can do at least three. Uh, Roderick, do we have anybody that's uh, typed into the chat yet? Uh, yes, Natasha Davis. Natasha? Yes, hello, good morning, good morning. Happy Thursday, everyone. Uh, happy to see all my BCN family here. <laughs> so I wanted to make a really amazing announcement, not because I'm the author, but because it, it's just so much fun uh, that we're helping so many people. On January 25th, I released my third book called 25 Valuable Golden Nuggets to Start, Stabilize, and Scale Any Business. I'm really excited about this particular tool um, because it is cataloging all of the amazing things that most business people wish they knew when they started and they wish they knew now to avoid those costly um, mistakes that we make or oversights. And so this particular book got released on January 25th and to date we have just entered into four different countries and I'm really proud about that. So uh, hopefully you guys will check out the information on BCN and if you see any value, please go ahead and you can grab your own copy. You can share it with other people and it's on Amazon. It's ebook and paperback available. And that's 25 valuable golden nuggets to start, stabilize, and scale any business. Thank you so much and blessings to you all. Thank you, Natasha. Just as an FYI, if you wanted to tie into doing an event, you could do up to four uh, seminars, webinars uh, a year as part of your annual membership. So you might want to tie that into your book. I will. We actually are going to be doing a masterclass on these very same things. So I will make sure I share that with BCN uh, family as well. Wonderful. And Roger, is there anyone else? Yes, we have David Taylor Klaus. David? Take that off mute first. Good morning, fellow BCN folk. Yeah, so uh, many of you know, if you keep up with the news on the BCN site, I launched my book in September. It's called Mindset Mondays with DTK, 52 Ways to Rewire Your Thinking and Transform Your Life. And I've been getting a, a lot of push for a, to create a program related to it. Um, I did not want to do a year-long program. If, if I were to run a year-long program, I would get frustrated partway through. So I've created a, uh, a program which is 52 weeks of mindset shift in 52 days. So it's a seven week program starting on March 1st, taking through the seven themes of the book. And it's a live coaching program helping folks really create the shift they're looking for to make 2021 the best year yet. So I put information and links, I put links into the chat thread for you. Uh, wonderful, uh, David. And if you tie anything into a webinar or seminar or in person later in the year, uh, that would be a great way to capture everybody even more. Would love to. It's a great so, sandbox here. Yes. Yeah, so that's uh, outstanding with both of you. I know we have more. We have a lot more. We have 
six pages uh, of all of these things. Anyone else? We have time for one more. Next, we have Debbie Rosen. Hey, Debbie. Hi. How are you? Um, I do PR marketing for Nakato Japanese restaurant. Um, it is the oldest and most authentic Japanese restaurant in town. And we are doing a fabulous Valentine's Day to go um, package this weekend. Um, it's offered Friday through Sunday, and it is a lobster and um, filet mignon hibachi dinner to go. It includes a split of bubbly, and it's $100, and you can order it online um, at nakatorestaurant.com. Debbie, uh, just one more thing. I think it's you guys have done just an outstanding job, Sashi and team, and doing well, um, you know, given what's going on in the pandemic. Can you take like 20 seconds to say why you guys are doing so well? Innovation. <laughs> Um, I think it is really trying a, a variety of things from family meals to to go um, really like crafting meals that people are looking for to go. We've also done a series of um, Sunday suppers with Sachi where people can order dinner and we do a Zoom kind of round table and it's really fun. Um, Sachi talks about the history of each of the different dishes. Sachi is the owner of the restaurant. Um, and so it's really crafting things and then also really highlighting the fresh fish that we have available that we get in uh, overnighted from Japan. So if anybody's looking for the freshest sushi in town, it's right there at Nakato. Thank you very much, Debbie. Sure. Thank you. See you. We'd like to focus now on our spotlights, um, our returning and new member spotlights. So we're going to start with Kingston Commercial Real Estate, uh, two minutes, the second year, and we've got uh, Michael and Darren and followed by Peter and then uh, William with Synovus and then Tricia. So uh, Michael and Darren. Okay, thank you, Deborah. Hey, my name is Darren Jones. My partner's name is Michael Jones. He is actually not here at the moment. The name of our company is Kingston Commercial Real Estate. Kingston Commercial is a 24-year-old Atlanta-based boutique real estate company, and we only work in the commercial arena. We have three primary areas of specialty. The first is user representation, where we work for our clients to locate and negotiate on their behalf a new lease or the new purchase or sale of commercial real estate. This could be traditional office space. It could be an office condo. It could be medical space, industrial space, or retail space. We work in all of those areas. Second area is landlord representation. Here we work for our building owners to either lease their vacant space or sell their building. Lastly, we have a property management division of Kingston Commercial. Currently we manage about a million and a half square feet of office space in and around the Atlanta area. Again, this is a combination of traditional office, retail and industrial buildings. Our ideal client is a local business owner who has a need to either buy, sell, lease, or sublease office space within the next six to 12 months or the foreseeable future. Additionally, uh, during these recent COVID times, we are working with a lot of our existing clients to get together with their landlord and renegotiate their existing lease, taking advantage of some very motivated landlords. Our best referral partners have traditionally been individuals who work in the B2B area with other business owners. In the past, these have been lawyers, accountants, and IT companies. Our member offer to all of you is to conduct a lease abstract or a property review at no cost. We would assess your current situation and consult with you on all likely opportunities, alternatives, and strategies. You can reach either Mike or myself directly by phone or by email. Our phone numbers and email addresses are on our BCN profile page or you can find these on our website, which is kingstoncommercial.com, kingstoncommercial.com. The best way for us to get started working on your commercial real estate need is simply to give us a call and we will discuss the situation. We look forward to speaking with all of you soon. And thank you very much, Deborah, for letting us go again. Uh, you're very welcome. Uh, technology is always fun uh, for both me today and uh, you last month, but we're all good. Um, I just want to say I, I commend you guys doing well, uh, you know, during the pandemic, you guys have really uh, pivoted very well and continue to do what you do, what you do 
in an excellent fashion. So uh, he heads off to you, hats off to you. Um, and now we're gonna go to Peter Weinbaum. Peter, we've got two minutes. Uh, Peter? Yep. Good morning, everybody. Um, hey, Peter Weinbaum, uh, financial advisor and financial planner with Ameriprise Financial, uh, which you may have heard of, of course. Uh, it's a Fortune 250 company. Uh, I have my own practice and number one in categories such as trust and service and technology. My job is to be my client's personal CFO. So basically what I try to do is achieve what you want to dream about and such as a fantastic retirement or solving the problems that you have and getting there. Uh, my tools are the tools that you would expect from an advisor, uh, stocks, ETFs, mutual funds, annuities, even hedge funds and venture capital I can get to as well. Uh, as well as life, disability, and long-term care. So really everything that goes to solving whatever the, the issues are. Um, it, I'm also a financial planner. Uh, if you're 50 years uh, or close to it, you should have at least one time in your life gone through the financial planning process. Really important to make sure that you're hitting to your, your retirement goals. Um, my niche is also the business market. Uh, for those who are business owners, you want to attract and retain uh, employees. The best way to do that, or one of the best ways to do that is having a 401k or a SEP or a simple. It's something I specialize in, um, so I can certainly help there. Um, my ideal client is successful people dealing with money in motion events, such as retirement, job transition, uh, divorce, starting a family, things like that. Um, also, my second ideal client, or if you know a, a business owner, CFO, HR manager, um, who's unhappy with their 401k plan or retirement plan and or advisor, and let me know. I, I'm sure I could help. Best referral partners are business owners, CPAs, divorce, and estate attorneys. And how to reach me, uh, you can go onto my website. You can just put Ameriprise Financial, Peter Weinbaum, you'll, you'll find me. Uh, or you can call my office or my email. Um, and my member offer is uh, an hour that we'll sit down and talk about what your goals are, what you're looking for, and if, and if I can help. Uh, best way to reach me is what I just mentioned, and that's it. Thank you. Peter, well done. Thank you very much, and um, appreciate your, your joining for renewing for a third year. Next, we're going to go to, I'm sorry. Next, we're going to go to uh, William Sonovis, William Weidman, also third year. Thanks, Deborah. Uh, my name is William Weidman. I've been serving Metro Atlanta as an as the Alfreda market manager with Sonova since 2005. Sonova is a 130 year old financial services company specializing in consumer, commercial and international banking. While we are considered a regionally based bank based on size and footprint, we do serve the Southeast. Sonova does remain community focused. We're relationship centered with a people first culture. My ideal client is a business owner with annual revenue under 5 million looking to strategically grow as well as maybe an individual looking to expand their reach in banking and financial services. My best referral partner or people like you, someone that's like minded and values personal relationships. My member offer for all referred clients is a free one hour financial needs assessment in addition to our business intro package valued at about $200. That would include anything from laser checks, deposit tickets, endorsement stamp, et cetera. The best way to get started is simply uh, call me directly, forward me an email. You can locate my contact information on the BCN website. Look forward to working and networking with you this year. Thanks, Deborah. You're very welcome. And William, like all of you have done a, a terrific job um, not only with your um, spotlights, but also in the BCN. And during our thank you moments and successes, it might be great to, uh, to hear more about that. So uh, thank you. Um, next, we're gonna hear from um, Trisha Malloy. Trisha is uh, going into her third year. Trish. Thank you. I am moving and grooving. Here we go, Trish. <laughs> Imagine taking all your delighted clients on every sales call. And that's what happens when you have compelling testimonials. So we all know what it's like when a client promises to write a testimonial and never gets around to doing it or sends you something that's flat and maybe generic. 
For the last three decades, I've written over a thousand testimonials for my clients for their marketing, and I'd love to do it for you. Here's how it works. You provide a list of your most delighted clients that have agreed to be interviewed and quoted in your marketing. I write the testimonials and get everyone's approval. And then you feature these recommendations on your website and throughout your marketing. And for BCN members, it's 150 a testimonial with the fifth one in a project free. So here are a few of the ways that you can use these testimonials. But besides your website, consider your LinkedIn profile, review sites, proposals, contracts, emails, advertising. If you have a reception area, consider a testimonial binder, your PowerPoint presentations, your blogs, your social media, and case studies. Over the last few years, I've had the pleasure of uh, writing testimonials for a lot of BCN members, uh, including Dave and Mike, and Leslie and Brent, and Deborah. Thank you. And also Stephanie. And I practice what I preach. So often when I do a project like this, I interview my client and I write a testimonial for me. And this one is from Leslie. So if your clients are raving about you, get it in writing. My ideal clients are business consultants, coaches, professional service firms, and home service specialists. And through my strategic partnership uh, program, I offer a referral commission to those who have clients that can benefit from these testimonials. So that might be marketing firms, website developers, and business coaches. And if you go to testimonialwritingservice.com, you can click on my Calendly and schedule a 15-minute talk. Or you can contact me at 770-565-1231 or at trisha at malloycom.com. So let's talk about your first project. Trisha, uh, excellent job. And thank you so much for renewing. And I just want to say to everyone that's listening, this is a great business development opportunity for an hour to really listen and get to know your fellow members and to really get ideas and then to take notes reach out to me if you'd like me to connect you to people, your fellow members, reach out to them. Uh, but this is, I can't say enough that during these times how, uh, how important this is. Returning members, uh, I just wanna recognize again, um, in January, February coming up, uh, Duffy will be renewing for her second year. Uh, again, Peter and, and Sonovas, thank you. And then we uh, have a list again of all the folks that have renewed. Um, and now I'd like to go to our keynote speaker, uh, Allison Hill. Let me do a little bit of a uh, intro for Allison. Uh, Allison serves as the head of diversity and social responsibility for War Capital Group, uh, which develops and is the leading uh, initiative for, uh, for Roark. So her initiative is develops and leads Roark's initiatives overall for diversity and inclusion and philanthropic giving and community service. Allison previously served on the executive team, if you've heard of the Miller Ale House, which is a full service restaurant, and as the vice president of marketing out of Orlando. And prior to that, she held uh, positions with Coca-Cola and Sprint in uh, domestic brand and marketing roles and developed and launched two startup concepts, which is how we met a few years ago uh, in Atlanta uh, that are in retail and restaurant industries. Allison earned her undergraduate and MBA from Cornell University, and she currently serves a six-year appointed term on the steering committee as well, and chairman, chairwoman of the diversity committee for the President's Council of Cornell Women, and that's to help and advance and champion women. She also serves on the Dean's Leadership Council for the Cornell Johnson Business School and the board of the Michelle McCann Fund, which is a nonprofit for the LPGA champion uh, Michelle, which advocates for diabetic children, and um, Michelle happens to be her sister-in-law. Um, without further ado, Allison, um, thank you so much for being our keynote speaker. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you so much, Deborah, um, for the warm welcome. And I'm really glad after I saw the speaker list that you just went through, I thought maybe you sent me the wrong link on purpose. <laughs> but you, you had decided I wasn't worthy to speak. Um, but I'm really happy to be here. I know how important business is to you. I've had the pleasure of sitting in on a couple of your previous meetings 
And the thing that really stuck out to me the most was that this is much more than a network. This is a community and you're really leveraging each other um, for meaningful relationships. And so I think it's the perfect segue into talking about why diversity is important and how to make it your competitive advantage. And we're gonna talk through just some steps because I think when you think about diversity and inclusion and equity, it seems like this whole big ocean of things to work on. And it's like, where do I even start? And so um, based on that, there's just some key steps that are recommended if you want to start your own program or initiatives for your company. So moving to the next slide, I think one of the things that's happened recently is that diversity has become this buzzword or even has some bad connotations at times. And so if I was gonna rebrand it, I would just think about it more about humanity because what it's really saying is how are you bringing perspectives and experiences to the table? They're gonna help you create better relationships with your team or your staff. How are you gonna relate better to your consumers to build your business, be more innovative um, in terms of, you know, just like Debbie was talking about um, with the restaurant, like how do you push each other to be more creative and innovative by having less group think? So so moving to the next slide, the thing is, is like, as you've seen too, is it's really hard and places like Coca-Cola have had a chief diversity officer for years and years. My position was added two and a half years ago. And it's like, why is it so hard? If there's so many proven success stories, why are people still marching in the street? Why is it such a big deal for a woman to be a, the vice president of the United States and a person of color? And really um, what I wanna do before we get to the blueprint part is just talk about philosophically what's going on. So when we move to this next slide, um, just by a show of thumbs up or, um, and I think you might have to hit enter, here we go. So this is um, an illusion, it's called the turning of the tables. Dr. Roger Shepard from Stanford, he's a psychologist, but I just love this illusion because it's fun and it can like blow people's minds. But just with a show of hands, do people think that the tabletop on the left can fit on top of the tabletop on the right? So it's either a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And I'll let you think about it for a second. So I'm seeing a mix, seeing a mix. And so the unbelievable answer to this is that they are exactly the same size. It's incredible. So I encourage you, either Deborah can send this out or you can just Google um, the tabletop illusion, grab your kid's tracing paper or your own tracing paper if you happen to have that around. And like we did this at Rourke and people were like, no way, like this can't be possible. But it's the number one thing to realize is that your brain, as, as much as we hate to admit it, we're imperfect people. And we get so much incoming information that's like, I think the stat is a million bits a minute. And so unless we wanted our brains to implode all over <laughs> our offices, it has to bucket and pattern recognition and, um, and really do a little bit of shortcutting for us. So when we go to the next slide, so the problem with having a brain like that is not so much the brain as much as it is what's fed into our brain. And from a societal standpoint, and this is a slide, I could do a slide on every single visible difference there is. This happens to be um, a, a slide about white women and the sexualization of women or putting them in an inferior position. My favorite one um, is the catch up, like even a woman can open it. And so, you know, just, playing on, on that. And so when you have an imperfect brain and you're getting fed stereotypes, you automatically go into situations assuming things about people that aren't even true. So we have a lot, we have generations of work that have to be unwound and that's what makes this so hard. So moving to the next slide, um, I know that you all are about competitive performance and really wanting to bring out the best in your teams and there's proven statistics, you can raise your profits by 33%. Larger companies that have boards that are diverse can go up to 44%. Um, but why is that, right? Like, how, how does that even work? Do you really buy into it? And so what they did is they put these other studies to study behavior. And there's one that I really love, it's jury panels, like fake jury panels. One was a homogenous group, one was a um, diverse group and they just studied their behaviors and it really came down to four things. So one is you're less likely to bring opinions to the table 
and you're bringing facts and then you're questioning each other more because you're not all similar and comfortable with one another. You are being more innovative, more creative because you're pushing each other more to think through things. And then the other thing that's interesting is when you're not all the same, maybe you're just not as lazy as the way I think about it. Like you're coming to the table like a little bit more understanding of your own biases um, that really helps the conversation. So that's kind of the why behind the why. And then when we go to the next slide, the other thing I realized when I got to Rourke was, um, well, actually I, I call her a frenemy now, <laughs> if you guys have heard that term. Um, but when I started in my job, she was like, oh, good luck with that. I'm like, well, what do you mean? She's like, well, have you seen their website? It's just a bunch of white guys. And so when I got there, I was thinking, really? Like, I don't think that's really what diversity is all about anyway. And so I took the time to go and meet every single person. And you realize, I think this is a good representation of diversity is not about, you know, um, all the visible differences. Of course, there's that too. But it's more like, how are you coming to the table with your experiences, your age, where you grew up? Where did you go to college? Did you not go to college? What were your parents like? So there's all these forms of diversity. And that's kind of the what you're looking for. But when you go, and what I learned at Rourke, by the way, with the white guys, is that <laughs> there are 17 first-generation college students that work there. We had eight immigrants, five first-generation Americans. So it was like, wow, like we have diversity of thought. We just need to build on that. And going to the next slide, um, one of the other things that people talk about, and you may have heard this before, diversity is who you're inviting to the party. Inclusion is like asking someone to dance at the party, but really it's the inclusion that makes a difference. So it's fine if Deborah's the first woman that joins a company, but that's not what's gonna make a difference. If she has a seat at the table, um, it's more about having a voice at the table. So Deborah comes in and Deborah teaches William something. And sorry, I'm picking on who's on my screen. And then William's going to make Peter smarter. And then everybody's going to leverage their experiences. So it's making sure that people feel like they can be their authentic selves. They can have their point of view and their um, opinion on things and making sure that if someone isn't speaking up, that you're proactively asking them, well, what do you think? Um, because people have different human behaviors. And then the last piece of this very important definition is about equity. So when you think about equality versus equity is understanding that not everybody comes into the situations at the same level. Um, there are systemic things that have gone on in the United States. Um, you know, there's just bigger, bigger issues than just um, what it seems at appearance. And so an example from a Rourke perspective would be, as we were looking at the interview process, as we're trying to diversify, and I'm like, why are there no women getting into private equity? Like, what is going on? And then the more I could talk to these students and student groups, you realize they didn't, they weren't prepped for the interview process. They weren't prepped for the process at all. So we've developed a new program where we're going even deeper. So these are sophomores in college and helping them figure out what classes to take, what skills to refine. And I think it's great because I, I think I was 40. I still didn't know what I wanted to be. So trying to help people do that is great. Um, so with all of that said, on the next slide, when George Floyd was murdered, um, right? And especially with the pandemic, it was like a bright light shown on a lot of things. And so everything from portfolio companies, like one of ours, I'll just name a couple like Orange Theory Fitness, which is very big, um, or Pet Value, which is another one, to some of my friends that actually ran or owned smaller companies, they were calling me to say, what do we do? How do we start? What should we think about? And the thing that I was saying to them is, it's not about a training. This is about a, a sustainable change in your business and here are some steps to go through. And so I think Deborah has a, a link that she can share, but if you find me on LinkedIn, I actually wrote a two-part article after doing a lot of these conversations um, that goes a little bit deeper, but just to, to walk you through these phases really quickly. And so Allison, that, we have a few minutes left, so I just wanna make sure. Yeah, so this will take about one minute. So okay. yeah, we're good. So the first phase is aligning culturally and kind of going back to what I was saying before that the founder of Rourke was like, gosh, we need to work on this. I believe in this. I believe this affects performance. And so hiring me was his form of leadership belief 
But I think the, the first thing you need to ask yourself is, do you really believe in this or does your leadership believe in this? And aligning with them on the pace that they want to go. And then doing the fancy word is cultural audit. It was really just like talking to everybody in the organization. How where are they on the spectrum of understanding? How do you start from ground zero? Because you're going to have detractors, you're going to have champions, but the bulk of the people are kind of in the middle. They just don't know what they don't know, and they want to be taught. So getting that all foundation built is really important. Then the next step is building those inclusive behaviors. So what is right for your organization and what do people need to work on? For us, it was like the basics of understanding of like bias. We all have it. So um, how do we be okay with it? How do we mitigate it? How do we learn from it? Microaggressions, are we inadvertently hurting people's feelings when we don't know? How do we be a better ally? And then really we framed it up as being the best leaders that you can. And then the next part in that inclusive behavior is celebrating. Like I was saying before, it's not about what everybody's doing wrong in the space. There's lots of things that people are doing right. And how do you celebrate those right things and then build from that? Um, and then the last phase is, okay, you've done this foundational work. You are ready for people before they arrive or you've enhanced the relationships already. But then what are you specifically going to do to integrate this into strategic business priorities? Um, so for us, you know, the, the, the externship um, sophomore level uh, educational program would be an example of a tactic for us, like from a recruiting standpoint. So just really like going through the big topics and what can you do that's low, low effort, but high impact to get started so that you can build some momentum and then it snowballs. And then just the last thing I would say before we open it up to questions is, it was really important to us not to make this feel like quotas or um, affirmative action or things that, like this was just about teaching, creating a better pool of candidates for us. Um, and so really we're focusing on outcomes and not necessarily measurement numbers. Um, and that was really important because especially again, going back to my business, a woman at Rourke doesn't want to be known that she was hired because she was a woman. She wants to be because she was the best that went through the interviewing process. So just to be really careful of some of that um, thinking and how you approach, you know, your specific culture and organization. So I hope this is helpful. I couldn't bring good weather to you, but hopefully I brought some. Okay. <laughs> Allison, um, this was outstanding. And, you know, when I look at our membership and I look at the diversity of people, industry, um, how they do what they do, I think this really, you know, covers every, every avenue. And so um, everyone that's listening, uh, Allison has a book uh, that she wrote with her family, with her two daughters and, um, and nieces. And I'm going to show that slide in a minute. But the first two people that have a question for Allison uh, we'll have an opportunity to win her book. And then on the rest, you can go to Amazon. So- um, uh, It's a cookbook. So don't yeah. get overly excited. It's a family <laughs> book. It's, it's food, it's food and recipes. And you've been on um, uh, NBC and Good Morning America and some other places in recognition of this. So does anyone have any questions at all for, for uh, Allison? Okay, Trish. For those of us who are uh, one person businesses, are there strategies that you would recommend like when putting together a team? So meaning you're a one person business and how are you interacting with others outside the business? Yeah, when, when we put together like a virtual team of other uh, solopreneurs, any thoughts on how to think in terms of keeping that diversity? So I think if you're a one person team, and you're, I'm not sure, I, I might not answer your question exactly, so you can correct me if I'm not understanding it right. But I think a lot of it is educating on how to build your business effectively, understanding who your consumer is. And so when I think about a one person business, you know, are you not tapping into um, a very significant revenue flow because you don't understand how to, um, and then finding people that, you know, can, can help you do that. I think that's more so when you're looking at that, it's about building your business authentically um, because an example of not doing something authentically is when um, 
what was it, the AAA, and they put together, you know, right after George Floyd's death, they put together this map of visiting civil rights um, locations and they got totally killed for it because it wasn't authentic to them. So I think whatever you do, just make sure you get, you seek out an expert or a person that can help you figure out what that strategy is gonna be. Very nice. Uh, is there any other questions, Roger? Can anyone uh, type into the chat? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. Not yet. Uh, do you have a question, Roderick? Uh, no, uh, oh, Natasha yeah. Davis did. Natasha Davis does. Natasha, um, go ahead. So thank you so much, Allison, for, for that topic. Um, so we have about 30 seconds, by the way, on this. So Natasha. The question I have for you is when you are working with individuals that don't or companies that don't have diversity inclusion as a part of their business model, what's the first thing that you do to help them to get there? So I think the, the thing that helped Rourke a lot was being slow and careful and deliberate. And what I mean by that is I really took the time and I had leadership support to do this, to go and meet every single person. So if you're in a bigger company, maybe it's like culture carriers at every level, but like really get to know what the culture is like and what are some of the things that you're trying to figure out that need to be improved. Mm -hmm. um, but then it was level setting that this is an important strategic priority. So what we did is we collaborated on a diversity principle and you can find it on our website actually, but over half of the firm collaborated with me to write it so that it meant something for Rourke, like this is important to us and this is why. Um, and I think just doing that level set at the very beginning is really important. And then you can start diving deeper into things. Perfect, thank you. So Natasha um, and Trisha, um, if you would uh, connect with Allison and Allison, I'll send an email, but uh, we'd love for them to get to receive your book. Absolutely. Yay. And, <laughs> and uh, so congratulations to both of you. And then if, uh, if you would just briefly in about 20 seconds, just touch on the uh, takeaways here. And this will be posted on the website, everybody, uh, by Monday um, with a YouTube of today's program uh, so that you can click on the link and get the uh, PDF. And I also have the PDF that I can email to you. Okay, great. So first of all, leadership alignment, it has to come from the top. If you are not aligned at the very top, you're pushing a rock uphill. So don't even try it. This is why diversity people burn out if you've seen those articles and they move on because um, they don't have the support. Make sure you're aligned culturally with what everybody in the organization is kind of thinking. Not that everybody thinks the same things, but how are you building um, alignment and definitions like we did with our diversity principle, for example. Make sure it's not so heavy all the time. I think it's a heavy topic. It can be emotional. Um, I find for myself, I have to juggle between passion and emotion sometimes. Um, so celebrate and take time for lighter moments. Um, get ready for people before they arrive. You know, you don't want somebody to come and then feel like they don't belong. Have you taught people how to accept new and diverse thinking before people come? Um, and then make it a strategic business priority. It has to integrate into everything you do. Like the success that Rourke has had, 60% of our hires have been non-white, non-male in the last two years, but it's not because Allison Hill was there. It's because the organization was bought in and other people embedded it into their business priorities. And then my last piece of advice, don't boil the ocean. It is so overwhelming. Just take a step-by-step and you can do it and don't be afraid of it. And it's never too late to start your program. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much, Allison. This is the book uh, that you'll be receiving, uh, Trisha and Natasha, Feeding the Family, Feeding America. And all of you that are listening, you can also go on Amazon. And these were the, uh, this is the family, the nieces and the daughters. Um, uh, Allison, on behalf of the BCM, we'd like to give you two um, special gifts. One is from Stars and Strikes and Lisa Angeles, if you want to make a note, is the head of uh, corporate sales there and it'll be a hundred dollar entertainment pass. Ooh, you'll be able to okay. enjoy. And then okay, the other great. one is with uh, Matt Kimbrough with Good Game at the Battery and that's Top Golf. So it's a uh, dinner or lunch and then the Top Golf Swing Suites. Oh, so, so fun. Both I'm, of those. And I'm going to be a better mom now. <laughs> 
stay on with us. And in the last few minutes, I want to recognize um, our new member, um, Amy Kelly, the insurance Nana. And Amy, you've got two minutes to share your um, new member spotlight, and then we'll go to our guests. Uh, Amy? Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Amy Kelly. I'm a health and life insurance agent, Affordable Care Act expert, Medicare specialist, and I'm also known as the insurance Nana because I get to raise my 11-year-old grandson. Um, I'm known as a concierge health insurance agent. And what does that mean is that I help the individual person custom design a health insurance plan that's gonna meet both their budget and their needs. Not everybody needs maternity benefits. For my Medicare clients, um, I can explain Medicare in less than 10 minutes. I think everybody should have their own superpower and my superpower is Medicare because I can make it very, very easy to understand. A great referral for me is somebody that is 64 years old that is just now getting a ridiculous amount of junk mail. That's a great referral because I'll walk them through the process or somebody that's considering retiring that's already over 65 that's on a group plan and now is gonna go to Medicare. That's a great referral for me. Great referral partners are a PNC agent, a financial advisor, attorneys, HR, coaches, CPAs, and bankers. Those are all great referral partners for me. Member offer, if, if you'd like for me to review your current health insurance plan to see if there's any gaps, I'll be glad to do that. In addition, if you will email me, I will send you a free copy of my ebook, How to Save Money on Healthcare. And also, I get a lot of questions this time of year in reference to the COVID vaccine. I have compiled a list here in Georgia of all the locations that you can register for the COVID vaccine. And if you would like to email me, I'll be glad to provide you with the list. The best way to get my contact information is to text NANA, N-A-N-A, -N -A, to 21000. And all my contact information will just download on your phone. All right, so for the folks in the group that know my tagline, unmute yourself, I need your help here, because having the wrong health insurance is enough, enough to make you sick. Thank you, guys. Well, that was a nice dance there, Amy. That was excellent. Uh, terrific job, and it's so nice to have you. Welcome to the BCN as a new member. Uh, you did terrific. Um, you know, these meetings can go on and on, but we've got a, a few more minutes left. So I, I'd like to recognize our guests. Um, I'm just going to say your name and your company in the last few minutes. Um, we've got uh, Rich Hartz and Jennifer Hartz, which is uh, global, Rich Hart Global Studios. Rich, where are you, Jennifer? If you could wave and say hello. Oh, I know you're there, Rich. Okay. I'm right there. You can't miss me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for being with us today. Thank you very much for the invite. Uh, Ed Mascali and Terry Mascali, uh, Mascali, Mascali Chiropractic, 35 years in business. Ed, where are you? We're right here, and we want to say thank you to the Rainmaker, Deborah. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you here. Verified Home Services, Justin, I uh, hope you're doing well. Justin, you want to say hello? Hey, how you guys doing? And thank you very much for uh, inviting me here, Deborah. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. And I want to thank Megan for uh, letting me know and Ruben all about you. Uh, Concrete Solutions of Atlanta, Paul Reed. Paul? Hi, Deborah. Thanks Are for you the opportunity. Uh, you're very welcome. And we're thrilled to have you with us today as well. And thanks to Mark Lewin for, for hiring you and doing such a great job for his home. And then we have Innovative Direct, David Wolfarth. David uh, uh, is the Executive Vice President of Sales and Marketing. Uh, David, are you with us? I know you're here. Megan, are you with us? Okay. Well, uh, David is probably was with us, but it was terrific to, um, to have all of the guests with us today. And in the last... Uh, couple minutes since we ran a little bit uh, late due to technology, um, I'd like to be able to um, ask your permission to at least showcase a couple of thank you moments and successes. So um, who here would like to share a thank you moment or a success? 
Well, Deborah, I have two. I would like to thank a new member, DUnity, for allowing me to help them with their merchant services. And I would like to give a huge shout out to Andrew Kiefer. Andrew sent me over a referral uh, two weeks ago, and it ended up being the largest account that I've ever had since being in credit card processing. So thank you so much, Andrew. Oh, Andrew, are you with us? I am. You're welcome, uh -huh. Margaret. Always glad to help. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Thank you, Andrew. Deborah? And yes. So I want everyone to take a good look at this. You recognize that face? That's right. That is Nidhi Dewan, the executive yogi. She is featured in a just outcoming article, Industry Era, as one of the top 10 best women leaders of 2020. Check that out. Congratulations, yes. Nidhi. Nidhi, outstanding. If you're with us and you were our keynote speaker last month, um, I'd like to say a thank you on behalf of myself and, and uh, Mike Feely with Procom to uh, two people. One is to you, Duffy, since I'm seeing you for the uh, exceptional job you did on our, uh, on our video testimonials, both the about us and the client testimonials. Um, can't say enough how natural they are. What a great flow. Uh, what a great job you did on the interviewing. And then the end result, we really appreciate it. And Amy Henkel, Amy, um, I know you're there. Uh, you did an outstanding job as well with the Procom website. And um, it's got a great navigation. It moves. Um, you can find things easily and it's content rich. And it's due to uh, both of you working hand in hand. So we thank you very much. My pleasure, my pleasure, Deborah. Thank you. Do you have time for one more? Uh, sure. All right, just super quick. Um, just wanted to. Uh, Who is this? Charlie Gray. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Deborah. It's Charlie. Hey, Charlie. So, um, big shout out for to Trotter, uh, specifically Kerry Br Greenberg and his team. Uh, we had a, a bit of a disaster at my sister's house in Sandy Springs. The entire back wall, foundation wall collapsed and uh, Kerry got his team moving and they completely fixed the problem. Good as new. And uh, we got a BCN discount for it. Thanks to Deborah Schwartz Griffin. Uh, well, thanks to you for maximizing it and listening to Kerry and team and them making it happen for you. So um, thank you for sharing that. And Mark Lewin, are you with us, Mark? Yeah, but I think I think Mark had an emergency. I, I, huh. I think he had okay. an emergency and was not able to make it today. Okay, so we will uh, make sure that he gets to share his tax strategies with everybody next month. And then lastly, um, I'd like to uh, do the member raffle. Um, and I want to see if Jeff is with us. Jeff, are you still with us? Jeff Chernoff? Okay, so what we're going to do is we have a raffle. Uh, we're uh, thanks to Taylor English and to Stars and Strikes, they both made a donation um, so that um, six of our members could have an opportunity to win a $100 Mikado Japanese gift card um, or a $100 Good Game, $100, another $100 with Stars and Strikes, and then three more with Stars and Strikes. Um, and so in the last uh, couple of minutes that we have, I also want to thank John Parker, Parker uh, John, um, is also uh, making a donation here for a member raffle 12 bottles, which is a case of hand sanitizer, which is very obviously timely right now. Um, so um, what we were gonna do is ask quiz questions, uh, but instead I'd like to, uh, since we don't have the quiz questions, uh, I'd like to open it up and um, hear from one of you to tell us what was your favorite part of today's program. Anyone that can answer that is going to get the first gift card. Can't be the volunteer steering committee. <laughs> I was about to step up. Cannot be the volunteer steering committee. I'll volunteer. Okay, okay Stephanie, is there something, what, what did you enjoy about today's program? Um, I enjoyed her, um, the broad explanation about going past the, the visible. That okay. really home. I don't think people think about that a lot. I don't think people think about that often enough at all. Um, and she put that out there and it, that's what I liked about it the best. 
So you're talking about Allison Hill, our speaker. Yes. Fabulous. And so for that and for your comment, and we thank you, um, you are going to get, you're going to receive a $100 gift card from Nikado. Thank you. Debbie Rosen, are you still with us? I am. So Debbie, I'm going to make a note. And if you would let Sashi know, we've got our member, Stephanie Graham, Graham Estate Planning. Yes. Um, we'll do that. that we would love to maximize that and enjoy uh, dinner uh, or, or pick up and delivery, whichever Stephanie wants to do through uh, Nakata. Sounds good. Okay. Is there anyone else that enjoyed something about our program today? Okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> You're all making me laugh. Uh, <laughs> then I, at the end, I will do the raffle next month. And I just want to wish everybody um, a wonderful day. The survey is coming up, so uh, there'll be two questions. Uh, please take the time to, to answer those. It'll come via email. And um, thank you again. Our next speaker is going to be Kyle Wade, the president and CEO of the Food Bank, and that will be March 11th. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Great day, everybody. You too.